Now we're going to tackle what's called a modal. And a modal is a, kind of an alert box that you can place uh, and the web page that has the button for the alert box will basically fade out. The alert box will appear on top of it and be what's called in focus or active. So let me show you. So here's a simple page we're going to create uh, in Bootstrap and then I have a, a button down here it says open modal and I'll click it and see how the fade kind of disappears, fades out and then the modal, this little um, box appears on top and notice it has a header area here it has kind of a content area here and then it has a, uh, a footer area here and notice that the footer uh, by default has a close button and also uh, it has an X so you can click out you can click either one and it will disappear so I can click it again and okay and then you can design uh, the look of the modal so uh, this is just without any design whatsoever um, but I'll have you uh, actually go into your create a CSS file uh, called modal and then attach you know to the web page and you can actually design the modal using the class names okay alright so the first things first what I'd like you to do is our friends our friends over at um, W3 schools um, have a great little thing on the modal and if you just do a search for you know bootstrap modal or whatever um, it's it's talking kind of all about the specifics of it so here is the trigger button okay and notice the trigger is an ID name called my modal and notice that the overall div is called my modal and that's what it's looking for okay perfect so again what I'd like you to do is just kind of go through this and, and so here's the basic idea of a modal that they give us here's the button to trigger it and here's the actual modal and notice the wonderful comments yes uh, which are extremely helpful so and it, it kind of explains um, how it works and the different parts of it and I would definitely keep this open as you're creating this we're going to use it later on okay but um, again it explains a lot of it of how it works alright so uh, I'm going to go into Adam and I basically have a template here um, I've already linked up to bootstrap um, I have kind of an empty body tag now notice that I have comments ready <laughs> for where the modal's going and then eventually where our sticky nav is going and I like to put the modal the first thing under the body and it's only because the modal is only going to appear when the button is triggered when when the button is pressed so no matter where you put the modal in between the body it's not going to appear and it's just to me it's sequentially easier to find it uh, first of all with comments so please uh, do the comments that I have or make your own or just comment everything uh, for both the nav and the modal and then also um, I'm gonna put some uh, comments where I have the button I'm gonna place the button in the bootstrap so we're gonna go down and we're gonna go down below the comments because again eventually the modal is gonna go here and the sticky nav will go here so right below that uh, I'm, again I'm inside the body I'm going to oops sorry um, doesn't matter how much space here I'm gonna make a jumbotron and I'm gonna make it uh, so the text is center in the jumbotron and that's again this there's two class names happening this is happening and because there's a space this is being read separately and they both deal with something in bootstrap the CSS bootstrap min file 
that Bootstrap understands. So I'm going to close off my Jumbotron, make a comment. There we go. All right, so now we're all set. Now, inside the Jumbotron, I'm going to put a container. And again, I'm going to close off. I always like to close off things. before I do anything. And this container is going to have a row and uh, let's see here. So inside the container will be, I guess, a row Okay, and again, container, row, and column. So inside the columns, I mean inside the row, there's going to be a call 12. Call dash, and that SM is going to win it when it breaks. Okay, and again, I will always want to close things before I ever do it. And we're just going to put an H1 tag here. And uh, I'll put a statement by Sir Edmund Hillary. So it is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Now, I'm not going to have any, um, any styling. I'm going to have you guys style this. So there's my H1. And then below it, um, I'm going to do an H3 with his name. Oh, sorry. Okay, so that's his name. All right. All right, now what I'm going to do is next, again, I've got uh, a Jumbotron here with a container inside. And because the container's inside the Jumbotron, uh, everything will span out 100% width of the whole page. If I did it the other way and I had the Jumbotron inside the container, uh, there'd be some gutter, some empty space on the left and the right. So um, I'm below it. And what I'm going to do is um, make another container. You can have as many containers as you want on a page. And then sometimes it's really nice to keep it nice and organized here. And with comments, I'll say closing of... bottom container. Now what I'm going to do is, let me let me get up here, I'm going to build a row I'm going to close it off again first thing before I, so I don't forget I'm going to do a, uh, let's do two rows, so I'm going to have a um, div class E oh, sorry, equals uh, call dash um, SM, that's the breakpoint, and 1, 2, 12. And again, I'm always going to close off before I add anything to it, so I remember to close off. And then I'm going to do H1, sorry, I need the angle brackets here, H1, This, this is a modal. Okay. 
So I got that. And again, I got a container. I got a, a row. I got, and here's where the row closes. So I'll do a, just a quick little thing. Okay, now I'm still inside the container at the bottom. I'm going to add another row. Always close it off before I do anything. Do a um, column 12. And again, I'll close it off. Let me save it. And then this is going to be where my trigger button is going to be. So I'm just going to make a comment. I haven't done anything yet. Okay. Now this is not going to look like a lot. Um, I haven't done any styling whatsoever, so if I click it, it basically is like that, okay? Uh, let's put this in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my coding, and again, there's a class name that we can use. Here we go. And here's that, uh, again, I'm inside the column SM12 that's holding the text. This is a modal, and I want it in the middle, so I'm going to say text-center. And again, that's a bootstrap term that will read it, recognize it, and then place whatever's inside this column 12 in the middle. So I'm going to save it, and I'll reload. There it is. Okay? And the button, the modal button to trigger the modal is going to be right below it in the second row right here. So let me make sure that, let me, here's my trigger button with nothing in it. I'm going to add, again, Text dash center. Okay. All right. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the wonderful simple example at W3 Schools. Okay. Again, I want you to look at this sample. We're going to actually use this. And then down here, they have a great explanation of things. Okay how it works and this is really important and also um, again you can um, you can uh, stylize it like here's the main part of it okay and here's the top part the header part and here is where's the footer at there's well, actually here's the main part of it and then here's the footer at the bottom so we, you can stylize it just like anything, and just you'll talk to these class names and you will color them background and the border and the text color within them. And you have different sizes you can do. You can say, you know, SM or LG or MD. Okay. All right. It's just good to know. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one. Now, here's what I'm going to do here's my trigger to run the modal, okay? I'm going to copy that first. Notice I'm going to copy the comments and uh, all this stuff that has the button in it. And notice the button is targeting something, an ID name with my modal. And notice that my modal down here, when I do it, when I get it, it has an ID name of my modal. So when the button's going to trigger this thing, uh, when it when it's clicked, but I'm going to copy that code. Now, what I'm going to do is, if you remember, right here, I made a spot for the trigger button. So I'm going to paste it, and there it is, right there. Now, again, I already made a comment, but you can keep both of them if you want. Okay, so I'm going to put the trigger there, down there. Now, what I'm going to do is, I always like to put my modal. Again, right below the body, because it's not going to appear unless that button is clicked. So you won't even see it, okay? So I'm going to go back to W3Schools, and I'm going to copy 
with the comments, all of this stuff, the modal, the my content, this is the whole modal right here. So all the stuff that I just highlighted right here, that's the actual modal. And I want you to copy that and go Command C to copy. And then I'm going to go back to Adam. And I'm going to actually, again, I already have comments of where I want it. Here's the opening of it, and here's the closing of it. So right in between there, I'm going to put the modal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it, go Command-S. Now see it has a, a simple line of text for the paragraphs. Remember the trick in Adam um, where if you want a paragraph of Latin text, you can say L and then click on lorem. So all I did was I pressed L, lowercase l. And there's lorem, and there all instantly is a paragraph of Latin text. So I'm going to save it, and then if you look at this thing, check this out. Again, it's not going to have a lot of styling. There is the button now in the second row, and when I click it, it works. Okay? And it works because at the bottom of my web page, my template... I am hooked up to jQuery. So not only am I getting jQuery from the internet, this is the jQuery uh, min file, and I'm getting it from uh, the internet, but also I'm loading the bootstrap min.js file um, uh, that's inside the JS folder. Remember the JS folder is in the same location as this physical web page. And that way, the web page is saying, hey, I'm looking for a folder called JS. There it is, right where I'm at. And then that slash means go inside of it and load this JS. And that's what's making the, um, the modal work. Now also, again, the JS will actually make the navigation work too. So what I'd like you to do is, is do this and add the modal right now I have not designed or stylized this what I'd like you to do is remember to stylize this you're actually going to create your own little CSS file okay and you're going to link it right here so you can you can copy that that link ref to the bootstrap min file copy it and paste it and just call it like modal.css, M-O-D-A-L. And again, you're going to create the modal CSS file. Just say, you know, in, in Atom, say file, new file, and save it as modal.cs. Now remember that you have to save it in the CSS folder, okay, so this web page can find it. But in this CSS folder, you're going to talk to the different class names uh, modal header, modal body, modal footer, and you can design the background color and the text font and um, whatever you want, okay? And so kind of have fun with that. Just see if you can get this working. And remember that to start with a template, but you also want to make sure the template is connected to uh, jQuery at the bottom of the, uh, just just above the closing of the body tag. So that'll make it work right there. Thanks.